Hi, my name is Chris Ryan and welcome to Las Colinas Golf Resort here in Spain and welcome to video number two in this series on how to fix your slice for good. Hopefully you've seen video one. Video two is going to be covering the backswing and looking at some of the common traits that I see from the slices out there. So welcome to Las Colinas Golf Resort here in Spain and welcome to video two in this four part video series how to fix your slice. If you haven't seen video one, I would recommend you watching that video first because this series of videos do follow on from one another. It's going to make a lot more sense having watched that one first. So I will link it down below. I will also link it here in the corner. Go and watch that one first. So this second video is going to be looking at the backswing and some of the faults that I see occurring in the backswing, which can ultimately lead to that slice. In video one, we discussed exactly what is happening down at impact if you are a slicer of the golf ball, but we need to look at exactly why those things happen and what the root causes of those things are. Now, having watched video one, you are all gonna be setting yourself up perfectly to the golf ball, we know that. So we can now start to look at what is happening in your golf swing, and specifically in this video, what is happening in the backswing. So we're going to be covering two, uh, three things. We're going to be covering the club face, we're going to be covering the knees and the hips, and we're going to be looking at the pivot of the rotation of the body in the backswing. Now, we appreciate that Obviously, the backswing is an impact, but we do realize that if we can influence some things in the backswing, we can ultimately influence the impact. And all influence the impact is exactly what we're trying to do. Obviously, we want that influence to be a positive way. So let's go ahead and let's talk initially about the first move away from the golf ball. I've got myself obviously set up here with a driver. I've got my target out there down the middle of this 18th fairway, and I'm going to move the club away in the fashion that I would like to see. Now you'll notice that this movement away was very much with my upper body. Due to that, my hips have moved a little bit and my knees have moved a little bit. You'll notice how the hands have moved on a slight inward arc and the club head has stayed pointing slightly down towards the ground. This is how I would like the golf club to move away in that first part of the golf scene. All too often, I will see very limited knee movement causing very limited hip movement, very limited rotation. I will then tend to see the hands and the arms moving away, the club head moving more in, and we start to get the club face a little bit more open. Open being pointing more upwards rather than downwards. So as we start to limit the rotation of the body, we start to increase the rotation of the arms, we start to find that the hands move away, the club head moves inside, and we start to get this club face already within the first three to four feet a little bit out of control. So what I would love you to practice is in setup feeling the pressure points between your upper arms and your chest and try to feel as you move the golf club away you maintain those contact points, you use your rotation and your pivot to move the club head and the handle away and you keep that club face under control by using this pivot as opposed to using the arms too much. A great little checkpoint for you to have at this first parallel is that the club head is in line with the hands, if not slightly outside the hands. The club head is pointing slightly down towards the ground and you already have some rotation in the knees and the hips as well as the upper body. So getting the golf swing off to a good start is absolutely key to getting yourself out of that slice shot into a more neutral ball flight, potentially even a right to left shot. That is the first thing we're going to look at. Now, the second thing I tend to say a golfer struggling with is actually just how they use their hips, how they use their knees within their golf swing. So let me give you an example of a golf swing that I see all too often from someone who slices the golf ball. So this would be the top of the golf swing. Now I've got very, very limited hip rotation and I haven't really changed the flex in my knees. What that really means is that although my hips have rotated a little bit, they've not really rotated on an angle and it's not really enabled me to get enough depth in the golf swing. Depth being how much the handle has moved inwards from the golf ball. You can see as I start to open up my hips and rotate more, I can achieve a little bit more depth as in the handle gets a little bit more behind me. If we can give the golfers who slice the ball a little bit more depth at the top of their swing, we increase the chances of them being able to hit more from the inside. It doesn't guarantee it, I appreciate that, but it gives us more chance. So what we should really find is that when we make our goal sing, we would like what I type to term an unrestricted hip turn. We're not trying to resist 
in the hips. We're not trying to build this coil. We are actually allowing the hips to make a free turn. As they make a free turn, the legs and the knees will start to change flex. What I really like to see from the golfers that I coach, especially from the average recreational golfer, is I like to see from a down the line view, I like to see some daylight appearing between the knees. That to me is a great sign that they've rotated the hips a good amount, their knees have changed flex, and they're also rotating on an angle. If we can do those things, if we can get the hips to rotate a good amount, we can initiate that rotation right from the start and we can continue it to the top. It enables us to get that depth that we were talking about a moment ago. That depth is absolutely essential as we progress into the downswing, trying to change our club path and have it a little bit more neutral, if not a little bit more from the inside. So once we've got our first move away, we really wanna start thinking about how we can rotate our hips, how we can rotate our knees. And what we should find as a result of that is we start to have a good amount of rotation in the shoulders. Again, common for the slices I say to have limited rotation, which again restricts the amount of depth we can get and it makes it very easy to hit down left of target, which are two of the traits we tend to see from those slices out there. The final thing we're gonna look at in this video, sorry, not the final thing, the final thing in the body movement, I should say, is actually the rotation from the face view. So if I take my starting position to this golf ball, and I'm just gonna take the club away so we can look a little bit at the rotation. I want you to feel like as you're keeping your hips fairly central, you're allowing your trail shoulder to rotate what you feel is behind the golf ball. And the feeling, not necessarily the reality, but the feeling would be that this lead shoulder is moving over my trail knee. And the reason for that is it's going to put you into this fantastic body shape, which is going to help us as we start to progress into our downswing and make our transitional move. The slicers will often have the opposite where the hips move away from the target. The lead shoulder rotates, but it never really gets behind the golf ball. And we get this very, very different body shape where you can see how my upper body is almost tipped towards the target. As this golfer starts down, it becomes very easy to get the upper body tilted towards the target. The golf club tends to move more from the outside and we tend to find we hit that slice. So let me show you what those two movements would look like with a golf club. So the one that we would like would be this one. And as I start down, it really helps me initiate the sequence correctly. And it really helps me get that golf club into a nice delivery position versus this one, which is quite common where you can see the rotation is very different. The hips have slid, the left shoulder stays too much in line with the golf ball. And you can see as I start my dancing from here, it looks like it's going to be very, very steep. It looks like it's going to be very much across to the left. And that is often exactly what happens when we see those golfers rotating in this, in this way. So a super simple drill that you can do. You can just take one of your alignment sticks. If you don't have an alignment stick, take a golf club. And as you set yourself up to the golf ball, place that alignment stick inside your trail heel, like so. And your job is to, whilst you keep the hips central, try to rotate the grip over the alignment stick that's on the ground. That will feel very different if you're a golfer who tends to do this with the hips and gets this almost extending position with the upper body, limited turn, doesn't get the body shape. So hips are staying forwards, rotating behind, that is going to help you with your rotation. So let's go cover our last thing in this video, which is the wrist position at the top. So the final thing for this video is just looking at where we position our wrists at the top of our goal swing. Now, when we're making our back swing, we have wrist set, and when we have wrist set, our wrist position or our wrist angles really control the club face angle. You can see how there's a direct relationship there between what my wrist is doing and what the club face is doing. So we need to ensure that at the top of your goal swing, you do not have an excessively cupped or what we call extended lead wrist. If you do have this, that effectively means the club face is open. You have already brought the right hand side of the course into play. The chances are you will swipe across it, swing left in an attempt to make that shot functional and make that left to right shot useful by sending it over towards the left hand side of the course, allowing it to come back. We should have the club face a little bit under control due to this takeaway, but I really want you to feel like at the top, the logo on your glove is pointing more skywards than it is out in front of you, or if not, down towards the ground. The checkpoint would be a flat lead wrist. 
if not flat, we'd like it slightly bowed. We'd like to move away from anything which is extended or cupped. The extended or cupped is what is opening that club face. That's what we need to get rid of. Now, as you can appreciate, if my lead wrist is changing its position, my trail wrist is also changing its position as well. So as my lead wrist flattens out, my right wrist has more bend. It feels as if my palm is facing more towards the sky. This is a great feeling for you golfers who slice the golf ball. So as we start, we can get that nice connected move away where we initiate the rotation. We have good hip turn and knee flex with a good pivot. And you can see how I've got that club face nicely under control at the top with my wrist conditions. This is absolutely key if we're to get rid of that slice. So the final part is just to appreciate what we need those wrists to be doing at the top. If we can get those wrists under control, we can control the club face. And if we can control the club face, we can start to change our path without the risk of that ball going even further to the right. And that's often a stumbling block for many golfers is when they change the path, they haven't changed the club face first and the shots go even further to the right. They get even more demoralized and obviously the scores get worse on the golf course. So in this video, we looked at the takeaway. We looked at the pivot in the lower body. We looked at the pivot, pivot from front on and we looked at the wrist positions at the top. As I've said multiple times already, don't go and change everything straight away in your golf swing. Just check these things. Maybe get yourself on video. You can use your camera, your phone at the moment. The, the video capabilities on phones are fantastic. Pop it in front of you, take a video, check these things. It may well be that you find a few things that you need to address and change if you want to get rid of your slice. So thank you very much for watching. Video three is coming next, which is the downswing. And then we're going to look at video four, which is some drills and some practice methods that you can use next time you get a chance to work on your game. Thank you for watching. Usual stuff is down below. Huge thanks to Las Colinas for having me for a few days. I'm sure you'll agree the course looks absolutely fantastic. I haven't unfortunately been able to play the course today, but I've driven around, looked at it. It looks absolutely fantastic and the facilities here are fantastic too. Usual stuff is down below, comments box, like button. And there is also a link over here to subscribe to my channel. If you're not a free subscriber, I would love to have you a subscriber of my channel. Hopefully we'll see you back here again soon. Make sure you stay tuned for videos three and four.